Hello and welcome to part 9 of the video series on Document Controller. Don't worry, we're getting to the home stretch now. Today we're probably going to look at the coolest stuff within the video series, the hybrid mode, whereby we use the 2D and 3D inputs in a mixed environment. In order to do that, the first thing we're going to learn today is how to map drawings from the document register onto the reference planes that we created in the last video. Once we have the drawings on the reference planes, we're going to scale them up so that we can take them from their small printed size to their now real world size to match the BIM model. Last but not least, we're going to go through the aligning process where we match up the 2D content onto the 3D model so that we really get that mixed hybrid environment. Let's get into it. Alright, so let's get started by opening up the file that we've been working on and again going to the document register. I'm going to bring out the reference plane palette here and pin it to my UI. You can see that I went through and I added some additional horizontal reference planes for the finished slab elevations. Now I want to turn on those tag columns that we created earlier so I can start to see the metadata about each drawing in the document register. Here. I can start to use those tags to sort and group just the different drawings that I'm going to need for the different reference plane types. I'll get started by turning on my north face reference plane and then I'm going to run a filter on all of my drawings to see just the elevations. You can see in the loc column we previously filled out that it was the north face so we know exactly which drawing to drag and drop onto the reference plane in the palette. Here, notice that it's giving me a warning dialog. It's telling me that there's a newer version of the drawing available, and it's asking me if I want to overwrite the existing version. I'm going to choose No so that I can have all three versions linked to that reference plane. Next, I'm going to drag and drop the other building faces onto the appropriate reference plane. I can quickly see here that there's two west drawings so I want to make sure and get both of them on the proper reference plane. Next, I'm going to run a filter in the document register for just the reflected ceiling plans so that I can map those to the applicable reference plane. You can see that I've color coded and made unique the name and code of the reference planes that I set at 8 foot above the floor to make this drag and drop process even easier on myself. We can also see here that the metadata tags that we added to the drawings in the document register are starting to become handy as I can quickly see here when a drawing is typical for multiple locations and I don't have to check where it belongs with each drag and drop operation. Once I've got all my drawings mapped to the reference plane, I want to check the scale on the drawings. I need to know the scale that these drawings were printed at because they've come in at a fraction of the size of the overall building so that they could be printed out on a manageable piece of paper. I need to set that scale on the drawing that's on the reference plane palette. To do that, I can multi-select all of the drawings that have the same scale and then I'll right click on any one of the drawings to bring up the editing context menu. Here I have the define scale command and I can put in that these were printed at 1 8 inch equals 1 foot. Now all of those drawings have upsized to be the proper size within the BIM environment as compared to how they were originally printed to scale. Now I'm going to repeat the same process for the floor plan drawings on my project. Again, I can quickly find all the drawings that I need by running a filter in the document register for the metadata that I previously created. And then I drag and drop onto the reference plane with the corresponding code. Notice that I get a little icon on the document version each time it's been mapped to a new reference plane. Again, I want to check the print scale 
to make sure that the floor plans were printed at the same scale that I'm going to set onto the reference plane. Here I can see that they were created at eighth inch per foot, so I'll right click and close this view set. And now I'm going to select all of those floor plans that I just mapped to the reference planes and right click on any one of them to get the editing context menu where we'll set the scale. Enter in an eighth inch equals a foot. And when I hit OK, all of the drawings will upsize to the proper real world size necessary. Lastly, I'm going to repeat the process for the plumbing floor plans, which are still in my document register because they match the filtering criteria. Again, I drag and drop them over, and I can see an icon that appears on the drawing version each time it's mapped. One last time, I want to check the print scale to make sure that these were printed at the same size. Oh, I can see here that these were actually printed at a quarter inch equals a foot, so it's a good thing that I checked for these separate floor plans. I'm going to control, click, select all of the different plumbing drawings on the reference plane palette. And then for the last time, I'll right click, define the scale, and this time I'm going to input a quarter inch equals a foot. Once we've got all of the drawings onto the reference planes, we're going to need to go through and align and scale them so that the 2D drawing position matches the 3D model position. To do that, we can select on any drawing here in the reference plane palette and then filter down to just the model content that we'd want to isolate during this aligning and scaling process. So here I'm going to isolate just the slabs from the superstructure model and use those slab edges to align and scale the architectural drawing. I want to filter down to just the content that I'm going to use for the align and scale operation so I put a section on to remove all of the floors below the reference plane based section. Next, I'll zoom into a good spot that shows me two far away building corners. When I select the drawing on the reference plane palette, choose the align and scale option, notice that it highlights yellow, meaning it's ready to be adjusted. I use the zoom window command to get in as close as possible to a building corner and select that with my endpoint O snap. I can hit spacebar to zoom back out and then next I need to pick the building corners that correspond to the points I just selected on the drawings. So here I'll pick the first corner, follow the tooltips on the screen, here I'll pick the second corner, and now I can see that the points on the 2D drawing have aligned with the points on the 3D model. Next, I'm going to need to do the same align and scale for my plumbing drawing. So I turn off the architectural drawing and turn on the plumbing drawing so it's visible on the reference plane. Again, I want to zoom in as closely as possible to the points on the 2D drawing so that I get just the right spot. When I have the right spot and I can see my end point O snap, I click. All along, I'm following the tooltips on the screen that tell me where I should be clicking on the 2D drawing or the 3D model. I take the time with the 3D model to get just the right bird's eye view so that I only click the slab edge that corresponds to the drawing. And then once I'm done, I've got a plumbing drawing that aligns onto the structural model slab edges. Here I can turn on the architectural drawing, and now I can see the plumbing and architectural drawing in context of the model. Once I finish the align and scale process for the horizontal reference planes, I'll need to do the same thing for the vertical reference planes. To help me with this, I want to isolate just the exteriors model 
Also, I want to turn on the reference plane that I'm going to be using, orbit the building away from me, and then use the section tool up in the reference plane palette to get just the part of the model that I need for the align and scale process. Click align and scale up in the reference plane palette menu bar and zoom in as close as you can to get just the right point on the 2D drawing. Follow the tooltips and select a second point on the 2D drawings and don't be afraid to zoom in as much as you need to get the exact point so you don't have to start the process all over again. Now pick the corresponding points on the model. Again, the tooltip on the screen will lead you through all the way. Once I find this last point and click enter, we'll have a facade drawing mapped to the vertical reference plane so that we can start to check and make sure that what was modeled for the curtain wall is the same thing as is contracted for the curtain wall. Now that I've got my reference planes and drawings in place, I can turn them on and off as needed to work in a hybrid environment. I can look at the BIM in context with the 2D drawing and make sure that I have all of my inputs in the same place at one time. So that's it. That's how you work in the hybrid mode. Well that about wraps it up for the hybrid view, which I think is pretty awesome. Hopefully you appreciate as well how we were able to take the 2D contract documents and map them onto our 3D BIM models that we're using for quantification, scheduling, and layout. We started the process by mapping from the document register onto the reference planes. From there, we scaled up the drawings and we aligned them to the 3D models. Once that's done, you can go in and start to do analysis between your 2D and your 3D to find any changes that you need to report to the rest of the team, which is what our next video is all about, creating issues and running constructability reports. It's also the last video in the series, which is good because I'm running out of polo shirts. I'll see you there.